Let's talk some politics now. 15 days to the midterm elections, and right now, both Democratic and Republican national leaders predict their party will walk away with a majority in the Senate when all is said and done. Absolutely. I think we feel really good about our chances of taking the Senate, and it's partly because, number one, the president's taking the country in the wrong direction. We are going to hold the Senate, and we're going to hold the Senate because over the next couple of weeks and leading up to, uh, to even today, the one question that voters are going to ask themselves, Chris, is who has my back? It will be a sprint to the finish line for sure. Fox News counts 10 battleground states. Many of these races will go down to election night and maybe even longer than that. Joining us now, Chris Wilson, a Republican pollster and former executive director of the Texas Republican Party. Emily Tish Sussman is director of the Center for American Progress Action Fund and former executive director of Young Democrats of America. Thanks, both of you, for being here. Uh, which one of you is the most optimistic? Emily, let's start with you. You going to hold the Senate, your party? We can start with me. I do believe the Democrats are going to hold the Senate. There are a number of competitive races. You named 10. I'd say probably eight are in that category of highly competitive. But we really aren't seeing national issues this year the way that we have in the past couple of years. And when we look at a generic ballot, which information just came out this morning, the Democrats are up by four points on a generic ballot. Of course, this is all going to come down to GOTV. Get out the vote in the last couple of days. Who feels passionate enough to show up to vote? So it really can come down to the the wire. Chris, wh what about that? I mean, the Republican voters are said to be more energized. Do you see it that way? Well, they are more energized, but I'll agree with Emily a little bit. It does come down to get out the vote. And the problem with measuring on energy is, is someone who shows up at the polls sad and depressed vote counts just as much as someone who's happy and excited. And, and, and so I'd say Democrats, <laughs> Democrats are said to be very good at getting out their voters. They really are. They, their 2012 proved that. It, really, it did. But I would say, if you look at, if you really want to know what's going to happen on Election Day, and you look at spending decisions, and right now Democrats are moving their money into races that nobody even thought were going to be competitive at the beginning of the cycle. They're having to move their money into New Hampshire, having to move their money into Minnesota. They're having to, they're creating a firewall strategy. And I'll tell you, I've been on both sides of a firewall strategy. I was on the wrong side of it in 2006, and it's not a fun thing to be a part of. And so looking at those spending decisions and look that Democrats are moving out of a lot of their challenger seats, they're moving out of their open seat rate, seats races, and they're trying to just protect their incumbents. And I think that really shows the truth behind this is they're hoping to just keep their incumbents from losing, and that's not a good place to be for Democrats Emily, right now. Emily, you said that you, you said Emily that uh, there aren't national issues being being voted on this time. But I mean, isn't the Obama administration overall isn't that kind of the elephant in the room when it comes to how people are going to vote? That certainly is one piece of it. But many of these of these races are focused on local issues. Look at North Carolina, where the Republican challenger there has had massive cuts to education. That is definitely on the ballot. I'd also push back on saying that Democrats are only trying to hold incumbents here. Republicans are doing quite a bit of holding on themselves in states they never considered would be competitive. Talk about Kentucky, Kansas, Georgia, South Dakota. These are states that Republicans thought they had in the bag. And suddenly, the reason the Democrats are going strong in them is because they're actually winnable. So what about that, Chris? Is there any um, irrational the Democrats have pulled, among yeah, Republicans? Democrats have pulled all their spending out of North Car or out of Kentucky. I'm sorry, North Carolina. I, you know, the problem with Emily's assertion here is that Barack Obama disagrees with her. He said his policies are on the ballot, and that really does not help. And particularly if you look at Kentucky, the Democrats pulled out of Kentucky after Alice Lundgren Grimes wouldn't even say she voted for Obama for election or re-election. And that's really the problem that Democrats have got to do. They're having to fight back against the Obama wave. I Again, I've been on the wrong side of that. It's not a fun place to be. It really is not a good place for your candidates to be. And so now Democrats are really right now hoping that Republican candidates do things like commit gaffes or do th something stupid. And it's just not happening. We've got stronger candidates, stronger campaigns we've had in the past. And so the only argument I see that takes place is how far above 51 Republicans get. And that's uh, it's going to be a good couple of weeks. But I'm not arguing that based on the fact that there's more enthusiasm. I'm arguing just on the based on the, ter on the uh, campaigns and the candidates that Republicans have put forth this year, which I think are probably the best crop of candidates they've produced in a long time. All right, Chris Wilson, Emily Tish Sussman, we will see what happens in, well, 16 days if we know by then. There are projections we might not. Thank Could you. Be runoffs. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, a major development in the case of missing you.